This video discusses the equipment and the procedure for the first experiment in general chemistry at Madison College, the scientific method. The goal of this experiment is to determine which factors will make an Alka-Seltzer tablet dissolve faster. Alka-Seltzer is something that you can buy at the drugstore. You might take it for heartburn or upset stomach or acid indigestion. When you look at the instructions on the package for Alka-Seltzer, you're supposed to take two tablets and dissolve them in four ounces of water. When you take those tablets and you dissolve them in water, they tend to bubble like you can see in the picture on the right. The first thing that you have to do for this experiment is you have to figure out how long does it take Alka-Seltzer to dissolve in the first place. Under what we might call typical conditions, this represents your control group. Um, the conditions that I suggest for your control group is to dissolve one Alka-Seltzer tablet in two ounces of tap water. And this mimics the conditions that you might follow following the instructions on the package. Because most of the glassware that you use in lab, the beakers and the graduated cylinders measure volume in milliliters, for this experiment we want you to use plastic beakers like you can see in these pictures below. The plastic beakers measure volume in both milliliters and fluid ounces, and you can use these to measure out your two ounces of tap water for your control group. Some people might want to test um, the temperature of the water as a potential variable to make the Alka-Seltzer dissolve faster. Because this is a potential experimental variable, I suggest that you record the temperature of your control group so that you know how um, you know the temperature of the water for your control. To record temperature in this experiment, we're going to be using digital thermometers, which you can see in this picture on the left. The digital thermometer records the temperature in degrees Celsius. Um, there's a switch on the top to turn it on and off, and you can just stick that probe in your water to figure out the, the initial temperature of your water when you just get it out of the tap. In order to figure out how long it takes the Alka-Seltzer to dissolve, we have stopwatches, these pink stopwatches that you can use to record the time. There's a little bit of area of gray here, and you have to use your own discretion to determine when the Alka-Seltzer is fully dissolved. You and your partner are going to have to decide when do you press stop on your stopwatch. My best advice for this is to talk with your partner and decide what your end point is and when do you think the Alka-Seltzer is fully dissolved. You might decide that it's when you see no solid left in the solution or when it stops bubbling. It's kind of hard to tell because the solution gets cloudy when it's bubbling. So just do your best and try to be consistent as you go from one trial to the next. For this reason, I suggest that you repeat your control group three times. You might get a slightly different time that you record that it takes the Alka-Seltzer to, to dissolve each time you run your control, but you can figure out that average time if you take the average of your three trials for your control group. Let's brainstorm some of the experimental variables that you might want to test in the lab this week. So one potential experimental variable to make the Alka-Seltzer dissolve faster is you can change the temperature of the water. You can increase the temperature of the water. You can use hot water to dissolve the Alka-Seltzer. If you want to use hot water, um, I would suggest that you get a big beaker filled with tap water and heat it up using these hot plates um, in the picture in the left that you can get in the cabinet underneath the sinks in the lab. I would suggest that you heat the water between 40 and 60 degrees Celsius. Don't go too hot with the water because then you just have a risk of burning yourself with really hot water. Um, set your hot plate. I suggest setting it at about five or six um, to get that nice um, temperature and without letting the water get too hot. You can also use cold water to dissolve the Alka-Seltzer. We'll have a cooler filled with ice, and you can make an ice bath um, to get cold water to use for your experiment. In either case, if you want to use hot water or cold water, make sure you record the exact temperature of the water that you use for your experimental trials. 
Another potential variable that you might want to test is using a crushed Alka-Seltzer tablet. You can grind up the Alka-Seltzer tablet using a mortar and pestle like I have in this picture here. Um, another way you could crush the tablet is, especially if you have some aggression that you want to get out, is you can take the Alka-Seltzer tablet and put it in a Ziploc bag and just pound on the tablet until you have a nice powder inside the Ziploc bag. So available to you in lab will be Ziploc bags and also the mortar and pestle if you want to grind up the tablet and if you want to test this as your experimental variable. One suggestion I have if you want to use the mortar and the pestle, when you're trying to transfer that into the beaker to dissolve your crushed tablet in water, Transfer it first into a, a plastic weigh boat, and that makes it a little bit easier to pour into the beaker than trying to pour from the big, bulky mortar and pestle. Um, so that's just one suggestion if you want to use this experimental variable for your lab. Another potential variable is if you change what you dissolve the Alka-Seltzer in. In our control group, we're really specific. You have to use tap water for that. If you wanted to dissolve the Alka-Seltzer in something that's not tap water, one thing that you could try is dissolving it in vinegar. What will be available in the lab are these big jugs of um, white vinegar. And if you can see on the label of it, it says 5% acidity. So what you're testing in this case is whether the Alka-Seltzer dissolves faster in an acidic solution. Um, so for, if you want to try this variable, you need to keep everything else the same. Still use two ounces of your liquid, but this case you'll use vinegar instead of tap water. Another potential variable that you could try would be to use deionized water instead of tap water. So in the lab, we have deionized water from that gray tap in the back of the lab room. You could try dissolving Alka-Seltzer in deionized water and see if that makes it dissolve faster. Another potential variable you could try would be stirring the solution. If you want to stir the solution, I would get um, the glass stir rod from the drawers at your lab station. One thing to be careful with if you want to do this variable is that while you're stirring the solution, it can be hard to observe when the Alka-Seltzer is fully dissolved. So my suggestion for this is stir the solution a specific amount of time. So for example, stir the solution for 10 seconds and then stop and wait to see when the Alka-Seltzer is fully dissolved. If you keep stirring it the whole time, it can be hard to see when it fully dissolves um, as you're agitating the solution. Another potential variable is you could change the amount of water that you dissolve the Alka-Seltzer in. So for our control group, you have to use two ounces of water. If you want to use a different amount of water for your experiment, so for example, if you wanted to use three ounces of water, or if you wanted to use six ounces of water, or if you wanted to use a whole liter of water, you could change the amount of water and see if that makes the Alka-Seltzer dissolve faster. There's other variables in addition to this list of five that I mentioned here. Feel free to brainstorm if you have other ideas or other things that you want to test in this lab. Feel free to mention those to your instructor and see if we can accommodate um, the different experiment that you want to do. Now, I have some general rules for designing the experiment for this lab. You guys have to write your own procedure and design your own experiment for this lab. Three guidelines that I have, or three rules for a good experiment, is that you can only test one variable at a time. So of that list of the different potential experimental variables, you only get to use one per experiment. So you won't be able to test every single one of those variables this week in lab. There's just not enough time to do all of those experiments. You're going to have to choose which variables do you think are going to make the Alka-Seltzer dissolve faster. Another important rule for a good experiment is you have to have a control group and an experimental group. The control group represents that typical condition that we outlined at the beginning of this video. I suggest that you repeat your control group three times and you do your experimental group three times. So that would be a total of six Alka-Seltzer tablets. You'll end up getting three times 
that it takes Alka-Seltzer to dissolve for each group and then I would suggest taking the average of those to figure out if on average the Alka-Seltzer dissolves faster in your experimental group when you compare that to your control or your typical condition. Um, that gets into the last point, which is one of the rules for a good experiment is to have multiple identical trials. And this tries to um, make sure that your results are repeatable and that you can confirm that you get the same result every time you do your experiment. If you just did your experiment once, it would be hard to know if that's just a fluke or if you get that same result again and again. So this helps confirm your results and it's just one of the rules of a good experiment. You need to repeat it at least more than once, but for this lab I would suggest doing um, your experimental group testing it three times or having three trials for your experiment. So good luck in lab this week and I hope this video helps.